Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? So, um, yeah, there's something I want to talk to you about. But before I do that, we will very quickly go to the weekly question. And the weekly question is, I have a mod that came with the Crone Beast Pack. And it's this one here. And it kind of works like the IT Runner um, or the uh, Homer Eco Variant tractor thing. Um, I'm not exactly sure what those things are called. I know you've got the IT runner one, but it's very it's similar to that. You, you've got a load of modules that fit onto the back, and you've got these two trailers. So I'll either get these two trailers to fit these modules, or I can use... Uh, no, there. Or I can use one of these trucks. Um, it'll be this one rather than the one with the gearbox, and uh, the modules just fit right on the back of the lorry there, or truck if you're in the States. I, I keep getting people say it's a truck, it's not a lorry. Um, I'm from the UK, so it's a lorry, and <laughs> I will continue to call it a lorry. Um, I will occasionally, when I'm on an American map, I will occasionally refer to them as semis or trucks, but I've grown up um, always knowing these as lorries, so um, I'm kind of set in my ways. Anyway, do you want me to get the lorry, or the truck, whichever you want to call it, or do you want me to get the trailer? And obviously the trailer is a lot cheaper, and you can tow it behind the tractor, whereas this one is hideously expensive, we'll probably only be able to uh, rent it. So it's your vote, it's your game. Head to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Now then, uh, some of you pointed out that when I was loading up my trailer full of silage the other day, uh, I used this bucket and I was talking to you about what is known as a high tip bucket, saying we could really do with a high tip bucket because you just can't get the height on this one. Um, it kind of levers the leaper off the ground which is a fraction unrealistic, and it breaks immersion somewhat. Um, yeah. A few people have pointed out that... Frith, what are you talking about? Just do that. I have a high-tip bucket. Okay, I have a high-tip bucket right here. I actually have one attached to the machine, and I had no idea. Because I am that special. Um, so yes, we actually have a high tip bucket that actually works. I tried it in the trailer as well, and it it fits it, it fits beautifully. It is just the right size, it's the right height. Everything works beautifully, and I've spent all this time not realising this is actually a proper high tip bucket. So um, thank you very much to everyone that pointed that out, and um, thank you also for not calling me a complete moron, um, even though you know you probably could have done and got away with it. Uh, yeah, so I have a, a high-tip bucket, and I had absolutely no idea. So there's a little bit of cash. Um, I will come back, and we'll do some more filling up with cash in a little while, but not right now. I'm going to get up to the beef and pig unit, and we are going to give them the water that we were going to give them, and then we've got to give them straw, and I have another job that I want to get on with as well. So I will get up to the beef and pigs a minute. Oh, I'm just finishing filling up this Bowser a minute. And if I back up, we'll get across the road. And we just need to top this up now. We need to put some straw in for them as well because they don't have any bedding yet. And then that is our beef and pigs all completely filled up and taken care of. I also would like, you know, because I was talking about getting that field just across the road. So we're going to need to go back to the BGA and get a load more money uh, because we want to buy that field. I can't remember how much it was now. I think it was like 90,000 or something. I will nip back up there and have a look um, off camera because I did I did check it out yesterday. I just can't remember now. So I'll do that off camera. I'll take a quick look. Right, so we've got that one full. I will spin round. Can I spin round on the spot? Sort of. I'll fill up the other Bowser now, the, the other water tower. Um, you've seen that before. You've just seen it now, so we don't need to see it again. And then I'll get back over. I will check the price of the field, and then I'll get back over to the other farm so that we can get the pecan mixer and start filling it up with straw and uh, actually no, we will go to the BGA first and we'll get money first buy that field and then we can start cultivating because I didn't want to go straight in on the ploughed ground again because I did that with the potatoes I'd like to cultivate this one first so this episode I'll put the cultivator going so that next week when I get there I'll be ready to um, start planting it and we're going to plant maize in there and for those of you who don't actually know because I was asked this a couple times um, is you know where, what's maize is it's a mod um, maize is actually corn I know it says corn in the in the game doesn't it um, look through here corn yeah 
Maize is actually corn. Um, I know that we call it maize here in the UK, and you have it as maize silage rather than corn silage. Um, I'm not sure where else in the world it's referred to as maize. So for those of you who don't know, when I say maize, I'm actually talking about corn. It's because I, you know, spend a lot of time as a farmer in this country, and we've ne we never refer to it as corn unless it's corn on the cob and we specify corn on the cob because when we talk about corn here in this country we talk we're actually referring to wheat or barley um i've never had a conversation with a farmer where he's talked about corn meaning um what you in the states would call maize and i'm not sure about australia new zealand and other parts of the world uh, south africa as well i should mention because uh, someone did actually uh, tell me just yesterday actually that uh, they're from South Africa and they watch as well so we have a proper international audience here ladies and gentlemen which is absolutely fantastic I love it um, if you refer to corn as maize in your home country I know that we do here in the UK but if you do elsewhere in the world I would love to hear it I would love to know where else in the world it is referred to as maize because I had quite a few people who didn't know what maize was um, and that to me is like is, is really really interesting because you know like uh, the difference between oilseed rape and canola the first time I heard canola being talked about I had absolutely no idea what it was because we use oilseed rape here in this country it's always referred as OSR or oilseed rape because it's an oilseed plant um, yeah so let me know in the comments what do you guys call maize it's um we call it maize uh the states you call it corn um is there other names for it in other parts of the world i'd be really interested to hear that um yeah anyway right i'm gonna get back to the farm and actually no i'll get to the bga so that we can get some money and then we'll get back to the farm and we'll see about doing the straw and yes it just occurred to me that because i was busy talking on the uh trip down um i completely forgot to go and check the price of that field I think it was 90 something thousand, uh, but I'm not entirely certain. So I'm going to sell a load of silage and get us a load of money, and then we'll have to see. I think we'll just sort of have to guess. If uh, I'll get it up to, I'll get up to about 120 thousand thereabouts, and if it turns out that we need a bit more, um, then we'll do that. But I'm not quite certain how much it was. But yeah, I mean, if, if, oops, too fast, way too fast, I just destroyed the front of that digger, uh, loader. So yeah, if, if it turns out that we need a bit more, we'll just have to come back to the BGA and get a bit more money. Um, once I have got enough money, we're going to head back to the farm and get the pecan, put in some straw. I reckon probably six bales. I don't even think we'll need that much, to be honest. If I remember rightly, I think it was just one round bale in each side, but back on Melbury Estate. Um, so in which case we'd only need two bales. Uh, so yeah, well, just to, just to be on the safe side, we'll put six bales in. We can always leave, because we've got so much mixed feed at the moment for the cattle. Oh no, actually we haven't. We've only got 52,000. How much did we have? I think we put two loads in. So I won't be able to leave it over there very long. I'll put six bales in and then probably come back and put some of that put the remainder back in for the cattle but I think I'll bring the pecan back in my own time uh, before uh, before next episode. Right, I'm going to keep selling silage for a minute and then I will meet you back at the farm when we're loading up the pecan. Uh, I think I'll do one last bucket full and that'll be it. We've got £105,000 now and if you have a look in here we've still got 385,000 litres of silage. Um, so we'll have plenty of money. It is taking a little while to do this, but I think that's because of the size of the bucket. It's only 6,400. So I might take a look somewhere and see if I can find a modded bucket, uh, get one that's slightly bigger. Um, and yes, it would be nice if I could find one with that high tip feature that I was talking to you about. You know, the one that I didn't think that I had? Yeah, you know, that one, that one right there. Um, so yeah. I w I'll see if I can find a slightly bigger bucket because I would like to speed this process up and I wanted to try and avoid using the conveyors. I know the conveyors are really cool and I really like the conveyors. They are extremely convenient um, and just generally all round awesome. But um, yeah, I want to see if I can sort of run this map without having to rely on the conveyors. So I think we're going to go for a bigger bucket and do it that way so that we can spoon it in properly. 
Right, I'm going to get back to the farm. And we are running out of time. It is soon going to be um, night time. So we're going to do it this, e we're going to do it this evening. We're going to get the uh, straw over to the beef and pigs. So they've got a comfortable bed to sleep on for their first night. And there we go. Um, yeah, then, then we can rest the night before we start on our little cultivating project. You know, I really should get a right-hand drive pickup. Because we are in England, after all, and we all drive on the right. Um, I just think it would be more appropriate because I'm used to I'm used to driving. I know you guys over in the states, and I don't know about New Zealand. I know Australia; they drive on the same side as us. Um, uh, but over in continental Europe as well, you guys all drive on this side of the road, which would be appropriate for. I'm really really light on the steering because of the Bowser on the back. I'm um, going a little bit fast, so. We drive on this side of the road, and it doesn't feel right, because, you know, you should be sat out towards the middle rather than right out on the side. Um, oop, there's a car coming there. I should have paid more attention. Right. Uh, this one, I am going to park right up behind the doits here. And stop. I will put these two away um, tomorrow morning in between... A bit re ready for next week, I'll put those away. Now, I want to come down here, and I want to get my Deutz tractor, the Warrior. The Warrior is actually um, unhitched now. I had to come off of the... I had to get rid of the manual attaching mod, and um, then I could unhitch that roller there, which uh, CSX uh, FS158, I think he's called. I can't remember his, his name. It's his lots and lots of letters. I know he's got FS15 in there. He wanted to uh, point out that this is actually made from um, railroad, you know, the, the railway wheels um, off of uh, railway carriages, you know, the, the big iron wheels. It's, it's made out of that, and he prefers using it when it's front-mounted rather than rear-mounted, but um, it doesn't unhitch either way. You've got to remove the manual attaching mod so that you can take it off of whatever tractor that you've got it attached to at the time. Um... Actually, no, I, I'm not sure. It might it might unhitch off the front of the tractor without any trouble. Uh, because I didn't actually test it. And I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to be stuck with that thing on the front. It would be an impressive front weight, but I think it would be a little excessive. Just just a smidgen. Oops, I didn't want to do that either. I want to come down here and I want to do that. And I want to do that. And now I want to get back in the tractor and we will pull out a little bit. We'll just come over to here like this. And then we will go and get our load ore. Right here, and we're going to put six bales into this pecan mixer. Here we go. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put six bales in the pecan mixer. Then I'm going to take it over to the beef and pigs. I will give them some bedding tonight, and I will stay the night over there. Uh, or at least I'll leave the machine over there for the night. And then I will bring it back. I will give the beef and the pigs a little bit more... Um, during uh, tomorrow morning so they got maximum straw and then I will uh, bring the pecan mixer back we'll put the excess actually I'll just leave it here I'll just park it up in the yard or something like that uh, but then I want to get that warrior onto the cultivator whoa 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 right this is why I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing pull the bales off so yeah we will um, this is I want to get the warrior on the cultivator, cultivating the field up there. I want to move over a little bit, like that. There we go. Right, another three bales. I went too far over that time. If this was real life, those bales would be probably falling off the fork about now. It would be damaging the bottom bale quite a lot, because the weight would be pulling it over, and it just wouldn't work very well. Right, anyway... I will take this over to the farm, and we will give them their bedding, and then we will rest for the night, and then we can start cultivating our new field that we will buy at the same time. I decided I would take the scenic route coming up here, and now I have to find... I think the off is right here, isn't it? Just on this side? Yes, I think it's this little tiny road. Come up here. We've got this huge, great big trailer, and we now need to try and get this up this hill. I don't know why I decided to do that. I forgot to turn my beacon on. I do apologise. I'm terrible at that. Always forgetting to turn my beacon on. This is slowing it down. 
<laughs> this is really slowing it down, this is. That is a monstrously impressive tractor. Look at the view, though. That is fantastic. I really do like this place. I really do like this map. It is worth taking the scenic route every now and then just to see the fantastic views that you get. That is incredible. Look at it. Gorgeous. Right, anyway. We need to... Oh, we're nearly there. So we got the windmills up there. I, have, I don't think that we're going to have enough money to be able to do windmills uh, on this playthrough. It's a little bit unfortunate. I would have liked to have been able to do that, but never mind. And we've got the castle up there on our left. And I will get over to the farm because we still want to get started on our cultivating tomorrow morning. So I will get over there so that we can put the straw in for the animals. Well, it's actually £110,000, which is almost everything that we own, or all the money at the moment. But anyway, we've now got this massive great big field over here. I'll leave the gates open, ready for tomorrow, so that we can go straight in with our cultivator. Although I am severely tempted to... Severely? Sorely tempted, I should say. So, sorely tempted to um, sell the cultivator that we've got. Because I know it's quite a long one, so it does do... It does mean that you can go faster with it um, and cultivate more in a single pass. Or at least you would if it was in real life. But this game treats the cultivators all the same, so I'm thinking that maybe we should just go for a slightly wider cultivator than the one that we've got. Uh, if we sell that one, I might have to put a spoonful or two of silage into the BTA just so that we can um, get enough money to get a decent cultivator. So I will take a look through the cultivator selection that I have available and pick one out and then buy that ready for the morning. Uh, we can always have... Uh, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll hitch up the cultivator, I'll have it ready and take it down to the other side. And we're only putting in a tiny, tiny bit of straw. I, well, I was right, we did only use one bale on each side. Oops, just crushed our wheelbarrow there. Wasn't very good. And turn that on again. Straw comes out and we have 1,300 left. We had... Oh no, we had 24,000. So if we've got 1,300, that's... Yeah, just under 11,000. So that would have been nearly three bales. So it was a bale and a half on each side. Well, I will spend the night. And in the morning, I will just very quickly top up what's left. I know we're not going to really use very much just in a, a half a day. Um, but I will top it up so that it is all ready. And then I will swap the cultivators so that we can start our cultivating. It's bright and early. I have topped up these. I've just shut all the gates up here because we won't be coming back into this yard for a little while now. Um, probably a couple of days just so, so that we can... Um, once we've got some animals there, then we'll come back and we'll get some cell. Uh, but we won't go back into that yard for just a little while. I'm on my way down to purchase a cultivator. I have been busy overnight. You'll see I've got some more money. I spooned a little bit more silage into the BGA so that we've got that. And I've got my beacon on. I'll do that. So yeah, I spooned, in the, uh, spooned the silage into the BGA using that high tip bucket that I didn't know existed, which is absolutely fantastic. And I still think that's really funny. Um, anyway, uh, then what did I do? I collected the eggs. I even collected the eggs. I know there's 25 eggs there now, but I did collect the eggs last night. So we've got 115 to sell. Um, so we will go and find an egg cell point sometime soon. And I used the other doits, the standard doits, to bring the cultivator down here. I thought I would sort of do a, a swap over. So I bring them down here. I'm going to unhitch the pecan mixer right here. And if I leap out a second, I've decided which uh, cultivator I'm going to get. So if I leave that one there a minute, and I'll run over here and we'll sell this one. And then we can get the... Uh, cultivator that I've decided I was I'm gonna get and this is a it's one of the standard game ones but I've never used it and it's one of those ones that would always get overlooked because it's not low range and it's not the you know the high-end range where you know everything um, you know, it's, it's like a lot faster a lot more efficient you know the big the big gear so we get 10,800 for that one I'm just going to switch this tractor off for now because we'll, um, I'll deal with that later. I'll take the pecan mixer back. So the cultivator that I'm going to get, standard one, uh, we've used that one. We, we always start with that one. We've used this one quite a bit. I use this one even on hard working. 
And then um, the other end, I've used this one a lot. So you've got these two, which I haven't used very much. I think I've used that one a bit. I've never used this one. This one requires a much more powerful tractor. This one, however, 250 horsepower tractor and an 8 meter working width. I thought that would be ideal. So we're going to grab that one. Okay, right, go to the garage a minute. And our tractors here, we've got, this is a 263 horsepower. And where is my fan schmabulous warrior? There he is. There's the warrior. That one's 320 horsepower. So he's a bigger tractor anyway. Now, 320 horsepower should be plenty to pull this cultivator as it only needs... Um, uh, what's it? 240 horsepower. 250 horsepower. And also, this cultivator is mostly made up of discs. So it's a different type of cultivator to what we've been using previously. And because of the makeup of the cultivator, we can actually, on this one, turn sharp corners. Which is the other thing that I was uh, looking for, is it's a narrow bit, it's a narrower cultivator. And because it's all wheels and doesn't have much in the way of, um, it doesn't have any, like, uh, tine sticking down into the ground. Any shanks, anything like that. Uh, it does mean that you can turn a lot sharper when you're using it in the field. And... You also, you try, the way that that one tends to work, for those of you who aren't really familiar, the ones with the tines in the ground, they, they sort of, they go into the ground and they vibrate. They're, they're very often called uh, vibratillers rather than just cultivators. They're very often referred to as a vibratiller because as it goes through the ground, the, the, the tines, a lot of them, the way they're made, they're on springs and so they vibrate and that shatters the clumps of earth. Um, I know that there are others that are made up slightly differently and just kind of the earth... Uh, rattles in between them but a lot of them work because they can move ever so slightly and so they vibrate and it shatters the clumps of earth this this is a disc tiller this works completely differently the discs are at angles and so they cut through the ground they slice through it and they slice through the clods um, and because you've got a couple of rows of them it sort of helps to shatter the the clumps the clumps will pass through they will get a sh they will uh, be sliced and shattered by the movement of the discs at angles at two different angles and i am out of time i'm way out of time actually so um and then you've got the rollers just after the rollers they they go over it just after that and the way what the rollers do is they they, they um like level it off afterwards and help to break up any more stubborn clods that may have been missed as they get uh, sort of pressed into the ground. Um, so it's not a, like a proper roller, but it's a it's a, a heavier disc almost that helps to just squash it that fine a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do a lot. I didn't turn my beacon on again. It's pointless now. But, um, yeah, I, I keep forgetting to turn my beacon on. I was terrible with this in real life as well. I was always forgetting to turn my beacon on as I was driving along the road. So it's not just on here. Um... Just, just in case you're wondering. So we come out onto the field and we will... Wow. That's really making that one bounce. Let's unfold it. We'll just very quickly test this. Uh, very quickly, my question for this week is... Do you want me to get this lorry here or truck, depending where you uh, hail from? Or do you want me to get uh, this trailer here? And both of them, what they do is they take these modules on the back... So you've got slurry, you've got uh, liquid transport, you've got a fertilizer spreader, you've got animal transport, standard trailer, uh, you've got all sorts. So do you want me to get the trailer that tows along behind the tractor that can take these modules, or do you want me to get the lorry slash truck, depending where you're from, um, as a standalone? Obviously, the lorry is considerably more expensive than the trailer, so we'd probably only rent it if we get the lorry, but we might actually be able to afford to buy it if we get the trailer. Um, but it's your vote, it's your game. Head to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. So let me just uh, unfold that one. I like how those wheels folded out there. I didn't really pay attention to that. So let's just fold that back up again because that was actually really, really cool. Excellent. I've never seen it operate like that before. Never seen um, a... Uh, any machine unfold in that fashion before. That is actually really cool. I don't really know what just happened there. Uh, okay, I really don't know what that was all about. So yeah, you've got the rollers on the back and this one just kind of lifts those up. It seems to want to cultivate whether you've got it raised or lowered, so you'd have to sort of fold it up. But 
we'll just have a quick trial run here before I go. Just, uh, I won't. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not going to do a full round on the field or anything. Um, so that is this cultivator. This is the disc cultivator. It actually works really cool. That's actually working really well. I quite like that. But I'm not going to boil. Oh, 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 oh! Can we see that? You just see on the side there. The, the, the passage of the earth going through between the discs. That's actually really cool. That's an awesome little animation that they got going there. Um, you can see the earth. It is flowing one way through the first set of discs. And then it gets uh, pulled the other way through the set and se second set of discs. And that is actually how they operate. That is what how they uh, break down those clumps of earth. And that is the important bit with cultivating. You're breaking up the big clods of dirt to uh, make it into just fine little um, pieces of earth so that you can plant the seeds in and the, uh, the roots can sort of get down in between all the earth better and pick up the nutrients better. That is the point of cultivating, is so that you can plant the seeds in it a little more evenly. That is really cool. I really like that. I'm quite impressed with that. I wonder if I can get a better view here. Can I, can I just see it? Not really. Right, anyway, um, if you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And also, don't forget our Twitter competition that is running right now. Uh, there is a link on my channel to my Twitter feed. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. There's a link on my channel to my Twitter feed. Uh, head over to my Twitter feed and pinned at the top is the post that you need to retweet. You need to follow me on Twitter to be in with a chance to win the prize of a £30 Steam voucher which will convert to your local currency which will um, hopefully let you buy this game if that's what you're not this game the FS17 but I mean you, you, it's a Steam voucher so you'll be able to use it for anything that you want uh, if you'd like a chance to enter into the competition there is just one prize of £30 it will be drawn on the 24th of October you've got until then to enter the competition and until next time thank you very much for watching this is Frithgar goodbye and see you later